look at a temple. We were we were sitting down and having lunch, and suddenly uh, I was pulled away from our lunch table, brought out into the hallway, and told that me and my crew needed to get in a van and drive to the capital city right at that moment and not say a word about anything else. And so we, we got in this van. We were told that we were going to be talking to somebody within the government. We didn't know who. Uh, our government minders were on the phone. At one point, we pulled over. They stepped away from the van, made more phone calls. We now know that that was when they learned that, in fact, we were not going to be speaking with a government official, but, in fact, would be speaking with Kenneth Bay, uh, Matthew Miller, and Jeffrey Fowle. But we continued our drive for another hour, pulled up to this hotel, and only when we were standing at the front door were we told that once we walked through those doors, we were going to to be seeing the three detained Americans that we would have, as you said, five minutes, and that we had to follow very strict guidelines. We could only talk about uh, the charges that they're facing, the conditions in which they're being held, and the message that they have for their families and for the American government. We were also told that if we went over the time or if the interview took a different turn, there could be some very serious consequences. We agreed to the guidelines, we walked in, and we started talking. And I want to just remind our viewers, you're still in uh, North Korea right now speaking with us live about this. When you entered those three different hotel rooms to speak with each, uh, you know, detainee separately, I did notice that at least one of them had a series of notes in front of him, and it felt as though he had to refer to those notes when you asked him questions about what he was guilty of. Did you have any other takeaway from the, the essence of the interview? Well, he was clearly very glad to see us, glad to see a CNN crew in the room with him. And, and I suspect he wrote down those notes because he, he wanted to organize his thoughts and make sure that he said everything that he wanted to say. His number one focus was worry about his family, his wife, who's a part-time hairstylist, as you heard in the interview, and his elementary school age children. He was actually arrested on his daughter's birthday. Uh, I don't know if they were spoken to beforehand, but I would imagine that they were like we were, the guidelines were, were laid out. Because all three of them, Ashley, gave us the same message, which, which is that they want a special envoy from the United States to come here to Pyongyang uh, to talk to the government here and perhaps try to work out some sort of a deal to secure their, their release so they can go back home. And it seemed they all had the same answers, almost to the T in a script that uh, I, I have admitted uh, wrongdoing and I'm seeking uh, you know forgiveness from the DPRK but beyond that I also noticed will in one of your interviews I think it was with Kevin Bay there was a mirror behind him and in the reflection I could see what looked to be uh, a North Korean or Kevin uh, Ke Kenneth Bay it looked to be uh, perhaps a guard was standing behind you what was in the background that we couldn't see yeah, what you didn't see behind the camera was a room full of people who were watching us. We were being video recorded. There was a photographer in the room. Uh, there were other government officials standing, listening uh, to our interview. And then there was someone with a timer because from the moment we asked our first question, there was five minutes on the clock. So you may have noticed at some point I, I was trying to move the interview along. I wanted all of them to have adequate time to, to get across what they needed to get across uh, within our allotted time and within the guidelines lines that were clearly set forth by the North Korean government here. And the guidelines, uh, you mentioned it briefly off the top of the interview I'm conducting with you now. You were told there'd be serious consequences, Will, if you strayed from those guidelines. Were you told what these consequences would be for you or your crew? We were not, uh, but we are scheduled to have a flight out of North Korea tomorrow. And, uh, and the government told us they were aware of that and then just reiterated that, it was, that, they, that they had a lot of thought that went into granting this interview to CNN. And, and, and they said they were doing this. They were looking at a temple. We were, we were sitting down and having lunch. And suddenly uh, I was pulled away from our lunch table, brought out into the hallway, and told that me and my crew needed to get in a van and drive to the capital city right at that moment and not say a word about anything else. And so we, we got in this van 
again, we were told that we were going to be talking to somebody within the government. We didn't know who. Uh, our government minders were on the phone. At one point, we pulled over. They stepped away from the van, made more phone calls. We now know that that was when they learned that, in fact, we were not going to be speaking with a government official, but, in fact, would be speaking with Kenneth Bay, uh, Matthew Miller, and Jeffrey Fowle. But we continued our drive for another hour, pulled up to this hotel, and only when we were standing at the front door were we told that once we walked through those doors, we were going to be seeing the three detained Americans that we would have, as you said, five minutes and that we had to follow very strict guidelines. We could only talk about uh, the charges that they're facing, the conditions in which they're being held, and the message that they have for their families and for the American government. We were also 